so here we shall conclude what is what was left in the first session pertaining to auxiliary diffraction and neutron diffraction i have written certain points that will tell you that will be helpful for you to writing the points for the examination and here you can see that the neutron diffraction is uh, used for all the three things powder pattern and even single crystal studies single crystal studies are very useful nowadays but uh, if you take xrd there are about uh, you know more than 200 techniques there now it has uh, developed and it is unlimited it can be taken at every place and it it can be made into a very portable instrument portable instrument so that means you know the instrument has the x-ray diffraction instrument has been you know, sent to many in, in many space probes like for example it was sent to mars and uh, the elements were analyzed very quickly probably this with the first uh, data that came from all the space probes including the latest one from the new horizons that went to pluto so, but it could not land there. Instead, it analyzed the air present there and could do the analysis. But Newton diffraction would require another uh, great facility like uh, a nuclear structure. Okay, now that is the first point. The second second point it easily locates water molecules in hydrated crystal system. What is meant by the hydrated crystal system? Like, for example, if you have magnesium sulfate seven H two O. The water present there in 7 h 2 can be easily identified using the magnesium crystal. Now this kind of thing is not probably possible with the X-rays because in X-rays you require single crystal or very purified sample. It takes up only the crystalline studies but doesn't take up the impure, impure things. Here the hydrated sample will have the coordinated water and that can be easily located by the Newton diffraction. Okay. And the third point is neutron diffraction can locate hydrogen in UHS3 as I told you in uh, previous class that the that the factor responsible for that is uh, known as the scattering factor scattering factor that is how far is this scattered and the x-ray scattering factor depends on the atomic number which is 92 for uranium and one which is uh, for hydrogen so the scattering factor of the uranium is so great that it uh, overwhelms or it even hides the presence of the hydrogen there and makes difficult for the analysis of compounds of the type UH3 in the X-ray diffraction but neutron diffraction can locate it very easily. And then the fourth point that is uh, very important is the ferromagnetic and antiferromagnetic material can be easily distinguished. Uh, for example, we saw that Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus can be easily distinguished by the neutron diffraction because it makes out the it, it makes out interacts with the nuclear magnetic moment based on the angular momentum. The magnetic momentum based on the uh, revolution or percussion or rotation around a certain thing. So any charged particle, any charged atom which is having a uh, a rotation is capable of giving you the magnetic field. And that magnetic field is uh, detected by the neutron diffraction which is absent in the case of the x-ray diffraction. So a compound of F type Fe3O4 act actually exists as FeO and Fe2O3. So this has got uh, two and this has got three and such things are there very easily identified by the ferrum, I mean the neutron diffraction. And then the order disorder transition of alloys is also there. So this is a kind of thing that we say that is called as the solid solution. In the solid solution type, so many things are in ordered pattern like uh, pneumatic, smectic phase, and uh, pneumatic phase and smectic phase. So that can be very easily understood using the neutron diffraction and it's absent in the presence of the X-ray diffraction. Likewise, the sixth property is quite similar to this one where you have considered the nickel copper alloy. So, I think I told you that uh, we just see copper as magnetic in nature and nickel as non-magnetic. 
and these two things you know can be easily identified by the x neutron diffraction there so it makes the understand reading of the uh, alloys very easier for using the neutron diffraction now here are certain dissimilarities and similarities uh, pertaining to the x-ray and neutron diffraction so i'm going to put point by point there so you have to, you have to write this and it can be found in the uh, in the description section of the youtube also the scattering of x-rays is due to the orbital electrons while that of neutron scattering is by the nucleus of the atom so it is an orbital electron that is important there but electrons also contribute to the scattering this is known as the magnetic scattering so i think this uh, is due to the angular momentum angular magnetic momentum that is a uh, resultant of this okay so that is the first point there and in the second point uh, the x-rays are considered to be neutral x-rays are considered to be neutral while uh, here it is but x-rays are produced by fast moving electron stoppage so i think you know the theory band this is not much of a significant difference but here it talks about the how they are produced and how these things are produced so you must have an idea about the source of the of the neutrons and that of the x-rays when fast moving electrons are stopped by a cathode or a, or a, or a metal so it produces x-rays therefore they have got a different uh, penetrating power there okay now in the next point it is uh, so here you can see that third point is x rays have high uh, penetrating power due to its uh, high energy and uh, neutral character point number 3 okay high penetrating power and due, due to its uh, high energy and uh, neutral character but neutron penetrating power varies according to its uh, kinetic energy so i think you know what this kinetic energy is i told you that when the neutrons are produced they you got high energy and we just slow down the slowing down of the neutron and we have called them as the optimal energy neutrons so that they are converted into thermal neutrons efficient enough to produce any reaction to produce interaction and sufficient enough to be converted into the wave wave form okay so that is the third point there so in the in the fourth point you have to see what it is here it is x-ray scattering is a function of uh, i think it was probably not able to that's a sine theta by 2 sine it is it's actually theta so sine theta by 2 so it's an angle of uh, angle of incidence or the angle which is so i think you know about the l lambda equal to 2d sin theta Bragg's equation and Hilbert's equation so that tells us about the uh, angle of uh, incidence there uh, this change the angle the diffraction pattern is completely uh, changing but it is not the case with the neutrons so we have seen that fast moving neutrons you know they can interact with the, the nucleus as well as the orbital electrons suppose if this is the neutron neutron beam there it can just go through this it can be deflected like this so it can interact with this and it can interact with these orbital electrons also whereas the in the case of the x-rays that will be done only for the orbital electrons only so that's a very good point to be noted there that is it is dependent on the angle of incidence like that okay so the fifth point you know the scattering factor depends on the number of electrons of the atoms so this is a very very essential point and very important point also that is the x-ray scattering factor depends on the number of orbital electrons so i told you that for uranium it depends on the 92 its atomic point for instance x-ray scattering factor for hydrogen is one while that of the uranium is 92 but neutron scattering factor does not depend on the atomic number here are some scattering factors 
this one is for oxygen it is uh, 2.11 this one is for lead and for uranium it is only uranium it is uh, the, the reasons are not clearly known why this is changing the reasons are not clearly known. We, we always look for scientific evidence for everything we record this one is probably there is some kind of interaction of the uh, neutron with the all the uh, all the neutron I mean, all the atom that is there under bombardment okay so the sixth point is probably the same thing we have seen in the uh, here it is the sixth point x-ray diffraction does not involve magnetic scattering so it is all about the magnetic scattering and uh, while neutron scattering involves magnetic scattering there therefore it can distinguish between ferrous and ferrite so between fe2 plus and fe3 plus there is a change in the uh, magnetic momentum magnetic moment and this magnetic moment is easily detected by the the uh, x-ray diffraction pattern by neutron electric diffraction pattern you cannot distinguish, distinguish this one okay so the next point is XRD can locate electron cloud. What is meant by electron cloud? It actually is uh, is like you know it's, it's talking about the uh, electron cloud means it is orbitals. Uh, so you can you can see how they are drifted, how they are distributed, or you can even measure the highest octane molecular orbital and lowest octane molecular using the x-ray diffraction while neutron diffraction locates the nucleus of the atoms that is it that is a, another main difference there so in the next point you know x-ray diffraction uh, does not reveal the position of the hydrogen atoms clearly that is uh, i think you can see what, what is uh, what, what is written there it doesn't reveal the position of the hydrogen atoms clearly what do you mean by that? So I think that uh, the, uh, for example, we have seen one example in which the hydrated water was found found by neutron diffraction. Sometimes the hydrogen do not appear at all. Do not appear at all. If you have some large uh, uh, atoms such as even nickel and copper, because they have got different uh, X-ray scattering power, and uh, Therefore, the scattering of hydrogen will be uh, hidden. But neutron diffraction can differentiate with the position of hydrogen atom very clearly. So this we have seen in the in the in the previous classes. So this is one of the another difference there. Then the next next difference is uh, XRD scattering factor does not differ for isotopes. So isotopes is another very important study. Uh, does not differ for isotopes of the same element while neutron scattering factor differs for isotopes. So this is a very good point to be noted. So for example, if you have hydrogen 1, deuterium and tritium, it can be identified using neutron diffraction, but uh, not X-ray diffraction. Not X-ray diffraction. So likewise, you can see any isotopes there, U92, U93, U94, all this can be identified using the uh, neutron diffraction, but not the X-ray diffraction. So this is an also a very important point to be noted there. The last uh, difference pertaining to these two techniques uh, is about uh, the absorption. So there is a possibility that so much absorption of uh, X-rays can go waste and it can be it cannot be accounted for. In X-ray diffraction, the absorption of X-rays is much greater than the actual scattering. Suppose if you have 100, 100 waves, if you send, you know, uh, the absorption is about, say, for example, 80, and the diffraction is only 20, or even it may be 70, and the diffraction is 30. Okay, so the, something is uh, getting absorbed there, but in the case of the absorption uh, the the neutron diffraction the absorption coefficient of neutrons is usually very small so if you send about 70 waves you know uh, 20 may be absorbed 50 may be given out okay so that is what we refer as the absorption coefficient and the absorption coefficient varies with the 
the atomic number that is what is mentioned here atomic number and varies with isotopes of the same element also it varies with the isotopes of the same element okay so here is an essential point there so you have to note down the absorption coefficient how much is absorbed how much is emitted out in fact all the electromagnetic radiations we study is a result of the absorption versus the emission so i think we know about the artist wheel in the invisible spectroscopy where we see if uh, blue light is absorbed yellow light is emitted okay so and the intensity of the yellow light depends upon how much blue is absorbed and how much yellow is emitted so same thing is there but in this case you know in the x-ray more absorption is there less uh, diffraction is there less emission is there but in the case of neutron diffraction there is more um, more emission and less very less absorption because if everything is absorbed there is a possibility that it can be converted into some uh, other element okay so these 10 points are very important keep in mind and we will see the rest of the things later thank you for joining